everybody, welcome to episode one of Drum Break TV. I'm Aaron Edgar from Third Ion Drumio and Modern Drummer, and my first guest, RVP from Devon Townsend Project. And we are super stoked to be showing you something really cool about the song Failure. Now, that song is rank and badass enough as it is, and the fills are super cool. I love them, they stick out so much on the record. But what's even cooler is that live, they've actually evolved and become even more badass. So here's the deal. We're gonna take apart the evolution of the fills within Failure. So with these fills, we've got an exclusive drum cam video from Ryan where we're gonna see exactly what he's doing and then I'm gonna break them down into steps that we can all learn from. That being said, if you wanna see the entire drums only playthrough from Ryan, click right here. And we've even got an exclusive live version at Glass Pop in front of 20,000 people. You wanna check that out? Click right here. Otherwise, stick around and we will get right into breaking up these fills. The album tempo on these songs is 129 BPM. So after we break down each piece, I'm gonna play them for you at 70 with a metronome and then 100 with a metronome. So you can hear exactly how these sound dissected. The first fill that we're gonna look at is in the middle of the first verse. There's this really cool hi-hat embellishment that goes into some bells and then it just erupts into this flurry of kicks and toms. Let's jump right in. Example 1A happens three times before we get into example 1B where the craziness is. But 1A is pretty cool on its own. Check this out. The beat stays basically the same as it was until we get to beat five. So one, two, three, four, five. At this point, we're gonna add 16th note triplets on the hi-hat into a bell. Now, each one of these bars, the only thing that's different is the bell. So he starts on his smallest bell, his largest bell, and then the bell of his ride cymbal for this. Let me just show you really slowly what this beat sounds like. Now, three times in a row, going from smallest to largest with the bells. The first time, I'm gonna put my 16th note triplets on my left hats here, just to make it so I can physically get over to that bell. The rest, I'm gonna leave over here on my main hats. So for this crazy kick and tom fill that happens in example 1B, the bass drums we have written as 16th note triplets, but they're there to fill in the space between a very wide flam that starts each of the following groupings. So take this notation with a slight grain of salt. Let's hear it as written without the flams first. Notice that I led all those groupings with my right hand. That's still gonna be the case for how these notes work. The flams are all preceding with a left. Let's hear that one more time, this time with the flams, super slow still. One, e, and, two, e, and. That lick is so fun to play. Honestly, one of my favorite things about Ryan is that every song, somewhere in there, there's gonna be a fill, a lick, 
or let's face it, a bunch of them that just ooze personality and have tons of feel. He's got such a tight pocket and an interesting way of voicing himself around the drum set. I seriously, just, I can't even get the smile off my face whenever I'm listening to his tracks. He's just such a fun player, really, really cool ideas. Speaking of cool ideas, let's jump into the next one. The next fill that we're gonna take a look at is a really cool double kick tom fill that's gonna take us into the outro of the song. <laughs> All right, so this fill that kicks us into the outro is a ton of fun to play, but there's a lot of notes, there's a lot going on in the tom, so it's a little tough to discern what exactly is happening. The first thing that we should do is just think about limbs one at a time. First up, your right hand is gonna play straight up just eighth notes on your floor tom for the first four quarter notes. Technically five, but when we get to beat five, there's 16th notes on the floor tom because your left hand is gonna join your right with the off beats. Check this out. Just your floor tom sounds like this. At the end, getting into 30 second notes with six of them up here, two in the kicks, and ending with a china. All right, that's the easy part. Now let's see what our left hand is gonna do on top of this. The first quarter note, we're gonna have one E and a. Uh. So snare, snare, eight. One more time. Then after that, the next three beats, we're gonna have and a, uh, and a, uh, and a. Uh. So 10, 10, 12. And then that takes us into beat five where we have our 16th notes on the floor tom. Everything except the kicks leading up to those last couple sounds like this. Now the final touch preceding this whole mess is a 16th note triplet run on your kicks, just three of them of course, and then on the beat before each of those and us with our left hand, we're gonna have the same thing. Poodle. Um, what can I say about this guy? So much to say about this guy. To me, what strikes me the most about his playing, uh, besides just the physicality, um, you know, the technicality, the style of music that he's playing, is how solid of a player he is. Um, you know, some guys when they oh he's a solid player, it's like oh well that's just a basic compliment. I don't think that's a basic compliment at all. I think being a solid player, I'd much rather be called a solid player than a flashy player or a, or a chopsy player because solid players usually play for the music, not for their egos. And Ryan definitely plays for the music and not for his ego. However, uh, all the time and usually by surprise, I just will turn my head and hear something and go, what just came out of you? Um, did not know you had that in your bag of tricks. Um, and I think this is a testament to the fact that he is continuously uh, pursuing, pushing himself, um, his ability at the drums, and being creative about it. Super solid. To me, one of the most solid players in, in extreme metal, in my opinion. Ryan Van Kaliuta, what's going on over there? It's just a legend right there. Man, so, so stoked to be able to collab with such amazing drummers on this project. Anyway, the next couple of fills that we're gonna look at are in the mid section of the song. One right in the middle and one taking us out of the section. <laughs> The 
next example, I'm actually going to play with a sticking that's going to be different than most of you. So, as you've probably noticed, my toms aren't in a typical descending order like Ryan's is. So, the first two snare drum notes, you're going to play these like right, left, right, left, right. Just like all the rest of the runs in this part, I'm going to play the first one as right, right, left, right, left. Only reason being is that I still want it to be snare, snare, 10, 8, 10. So, do as I say, not as I do in this respect. Just flip your sticking to straight up singles and it's gonna make this work out for you just fine. Let's take a look at just exactly how this fill works. This fill is action packed with toms and splashes and kicks. It's a cacophony of awesome. So first up, what we have is five 16th notes and then two 32nd notes on the kick. If we took that left foot away, this whole thing would just be even 16th notes through. Check this out. One, E, and a, uh, two, so they're just twice as fast when we get there. Let's hear what that first little group sounds like. The next group is the same rhythm, but we're gonna move it around. He's gonna go 10, splash, 12, 10, 12. Again, right, left, right, left, right is gonna take this for you. Let's hear just that. Minus a stack. To the first two together. And the next group is almost the same again. So after the two kicks, after our 10 splash, 12, 10, 12, we're gonna have 12 splash, 16, 16, 16, 16. And then we're gonna have three eighth note crashes and kicks followed by a fourth one into beat one. When this fill comes out into beat one, it is so powerful. There's all this cool stuff happening and then these big solid eighth note crashes makes a real cool impact. Nice and slow. Let's hear what the whole thing sounds like together, and then we'll put it together with our metronome. So this last fill that we're gonna take apart implies a slowdown. This one speaks right to my heart as an implied metric modulation where it makes it sound to the listener like the whole thing slowed down a little bit and we start playing this triplet pattern. But that's just a trick. Check this out. The whole pattern fits within three quarter notes of 16th notes. So we're gonna have this. One E and a two E and a three E and a. So we have a kick on that first accent and a snare on the third one. It just simulates a rock beat. Let me just show you what that sounds like. I'll count us in. One E and a two E and a three E and a. Notice how without any reference, it kind of just sounds like a triplet bass beat. Again, that's just a trick. Let me show you what it sounds like with our metronome on. It's even more impactful within the context of the beat. Let me show you with the previous two bars intact.
So that is gonna wrap it up for our Drum Break Episode 1 lesson content. Now, if you're dying for more, you can click here and I'll send you to some bonus content where we'll have Ryan talking all about his gear, including his favorite snare drum. A little bit of a hint here, we have a very similar favorite snare drum. Uh, there's even some great question and answer footage. So once I've finished flapping my gums here, you're gonna get that full drum playthrough with Ryan. And don't forget, if you wanna check out the live at Glass Pop version, there's a link in the description. So let us know in the comments who you wanna see next on Drum Break. Next week, we have John Tempesta. I can't wait. I've always wanted John Tempesta drum videos. And guess what? Now we're gonna have some. I'll see you guys all real soon.
everybody. I'm AED here with DBTV, and I've got my guest RVP from DTP. 